So another thing we want to look at with diels alder reactions is what happens when you start off with a cyclic diene. Well, what happens is you end up with a bicyclic product. So, and some things get a, bit, a little bit funky with these bicyclic products and things of this sort. So, uh, but if you kind of just look at your most basic diels alder reactants, so we got four carbons, one, two, three, four, and your most basic diels alder dienophile there. So, and then your most basic diels alder product is just plain old cyclohexene. And then you realize, okay, what's different about our reactants from the most basic ones? Well, the only difference is this CH2 group right here. And that CH2 group, which I'll draw in right there, is bonded to both this carbon and this carbon. And that's how you predict kind of this product. Now we can draw it a little bit differently, but that's in principle how you predict it. So oftentimes what I tell students to do is start with your most basic diels alder reactants and your most basic diels alder product. And then if you add something to it, like this CH2 group, then add it onto your most basic product as well. So that's kind of how you predict products of more complicated diels alders. Now, one other thing to note is uh, we pointed out that one other way we draw this here, this bicyclic compound, is like this. So, and I often number my compounds like this as well, and I go one, two, three, four from my diene. So, and then I number through A and by B on my dienophile. And where that numbering system works here is one, two, three, four and then A and B. And you can see the new bonds between four and A here and one and B, that's where the new sigma bonds formed. Um, so that's kind of the gist here. So, and then this CH2 that's up top right here, that is this bridgehead carbon. I'm sorry, that is the bridge carbon, not the bridgehead. Uh, that's CH2 right there. So, and you'll, you should be able to recognize either one of these structures. Now you're free to draw either one, but you also have to recognize either one as well. So. When you've got, a, uh, again, a cyclic diene, you're going to end up with this bicyclic product, and you definitely got to recognize both ways of drawing it. Now, there's one other thing to worry about with forming a bicyclic compound in diels alder and it involves specifically these two carbons right here. And if you recall, those two carbons match up with the dienophile carbons. So in your dienophile carbons, uh, are going to end up being these sp3 hybridized carbons on your ring and they're going to have two different positions and a couple of them we label as exo positions and a couple of them we label as endo positions and if you recall we said that withdrawing groups so activate your dienophile and it turns out that the withdrawing groups also heavily prefer to be in the endo positions not the exo so if you draw this version uh, of a bicyclic, make sure your withdrawing groups, if you have a choice, end up in the endo positions. Uh, if you look here, they're cis to each other. The endo positions are both cis to each other as well. So if you start with two withdrawing groups cis, they both go endo. But if you start out with two withdrawing groups trans, one's going to be endo, one's going to be exo. You have no way around it. They, have, they start out trans, they have to stay trans. That was part of that stereoselectivity we talked about. So let's take a look at this next example and we'll keep that endo rule in mind. And if you recall, I like to compare any kind of complex diels alder reaction to my most basic diels alder reaction. And I just kind of keep it off to the side here so I can see everything that's going on. But if you recall, I like to do one, two, three, four, A and B, which matches up with one, two, three, four, A and B. So and up here, that's one, two, three, for A and B. And again, I'm going to draw this kind of the new way for a bicyclic, since I realize it's going to be bicyclic. And if I match up my numbering system here, that's one, two, three, four, A and B. So I'm going to ask myself, what's different? Well, one thing that's different is that bridge head, and I've already got that on there. I've added that CH2. I've already added that right here. So the other thing that's different, though, is these cyano groups. Now, these two cyano groups are cis to each other, so they still need to be cis on the product, but as we recall, they heavily prefer this endo position. It turns out uh, they actually will be uh, lower the energy of the transition state. They'll have a little pi overlap with the transition state when they're in the endo as compared to the exo, and that's what's kind of driving this. So in this case, I specifically want to put those two cyano groups in those endo positions, and I'm just going to draw in the hydrogens for clarity's sake, but they're out here in the exo positions. Again, the cyano groups in the endo positions. That's our product.
So I figured we'd use this next example to make this even just a little bit harder. So but if I look at my dying, there's one, two, three, four positions and position A and B. So and if I draw my most basic deals alder product, that's this guy. And in this form, it's again, one, two, three, four, A and B. Cool. From here, I got to ask myself, okay, what's different on my reactants compared to my most basic deals alder reactants? And again, we'll draw those out for clarity's sake. There's my most basic deals alder diene and my most basic deals alder dienophile. And the question is, what's different? Because anything that's different on the reactants, I better make different on the products. Well, one of the things that's different is connecting carbons one and four are these two CH2s. So it's a two carbon bridge instead of a one carbon bridge. And so the first thing we'll do is draw a two carbon bridge rather than just a one carbon bridge. So there's those CH2s in the bridge. Okay, so the next thing that's different is that A and B, the dienophile, are tied up in a ring here. So, and in this case, these two groups are cis to each other. So we wanna make sure they go in the endo positions. So, but then we have to make this kind of funky ring where they're both bonded to an oxygen. So, and for clarity's sake, again, we might consider drawing in the hydrogens that would be here in the exo positions. So, but there's this guy. Now, one thing to note, said you could end up seeing this drawn in kind of the normal overhead planar conformation as well. If you did, what you'd end up seeing is something looking like this, and we'd have some wedge bonds there, and a wedge bond there, and they might even just make this a big solid wedge all the way around. So that's the bridge overhead. So, and then what you might see over here though, is gonna get a little bit funky. So you might see this, uh, but notice the question are these sister trans to each other? Well, these carbons are sp3 hybridized, and so these should either be wedges or dashes. And so in this case, to show these in the endo, they point down, that would correspond to dashes. But we have a problem. For whatever reason, somebody somewhere along the way said, oh, you know what? I don't like seeing wedges and dashes in the middle of a ring. And I'm just thinking, well, we did it over here. Well, for whatever reason, people don't like it. And by people, I mean your professors uh, and the lords of organic chemistry, but they don't like seeing that. And so in this case, instead, they'll probably leave this a straight line. And what they do instead is they draw in the hydrogen that's attached there. And they put that hydrogen as a wedge there and as a wedge there. And if he's the wedge, it implies that this bonds the dash, even though the dash is not drawn in. So oftentimes you'll see it that way. And that's why a lot of, you know, if you're online computer uh, homework, you know, tutorials and stuff like that, that's what they want to see as well. So just a little heads up uh, for a tip there. All right, finally, I want to do one last example of a deals alder reaction. And in this case, I want to look at your dienophile not when it's an alkene, but when it's an alkyne. And there'll be one little trick to this and that's it, but overall it's not the worst example in the world. But again, if we compare this to our most basic Diels alder reactants, so I'm gonna label this one, two, three, four, A and B. So, and if I draw my product, and again, I'll draw it like this, because we know it's gonna be bicyclic, starting with a cyclic diene. So, and in this case, we'll have a double bond right there. And again, one, two, three, four, A, B. All right, so what's different about my reactants compared to my most basic deals, all the reactants? Well, again, one is gonna be that bridge, that CH2 right there. So we'll draw that in right there. There's that CH2 group. So, but then also, what else is different? Well, I start out with a triple bond between A and B instead of a double. That means there's one extra pi bond. That means there's gonna be one extra pi bond in the product. So, and then I've got these two cyano groups here and here attached to A and B. And so one of them's gonna be here and one of them's gonna be here. And the question is, you're like, oh, Chad, Chad, you've got it up there still for us. Well, I've got it up there to trick you. And students are like, yeah, Chad, it's the endo rule. Make sure they go endo. Well, in this case, there is no endo rule. And that might sound a little strange, but the key is, is that atoms A and B are sp2 hybridized, not sp3 hybridized. So they're no longer tetrahedral, they're trigonal planar, and they're not gonna have wedges and dashes at all. Trigonal planar atoms just have straight lines. And so don't put wedges and dashes, don't try and put them straight down to make it look like the endo rule or something like that. Um, this is just the way it is when you start with an alkyne. Straight lines, no wedges, no dashes, no endo rule to even worry about. Um, 
that's kind of the deal. And that's what I really wanted to show you by giving you an alkyne as a dienophile.